Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in this video, we will learn about the read only memory. So during the video, we will see the basic construction of this ROM and we will also see the different types of ROM. So earlier, we have seen that there are two types of memories which CPU requires during the operation that is RAM and the ROM. So we have seen that this RAM is a temporary storage device which holds the program and the OS processes which CPU might require during the operation. And we have already seen about this RAM in the previous videos. Then the second type of memory is the ROM. So this ROM stands for the read-only memory. And as its name suggests, the CPU can only read the data from the memory, but it cannot write it. But nowadays, the most of the ROMs that are available commercially are the read-mostly memory, meaning that Mostly they can be used for reading the data from the memory, but when required, it is also possible to write the content in this memory. So later on, we will see the different types of ROMs. Now unlike the RAM, this ROM is the non-volatile type of memory. Meaning that, even if the power goes down, then also the content of the memory will remain as it is. And that is why it is used in the applications where we want to store the data permanently. So at the end of the video, we will also see the typical applications of the ROM. But first, let us see the basic structure of this ROM. So similar to the RAM, if the ROM contains total 2 to the power k words, then with the help of the k address lines, it is possible to select any one of the words. And once the ROM is enabled, then the data at the specific word will be available at the output. So if the word length is equal to n bits, then the output data will be of n bits. That means this 2 to the power k word ROM consists of the k inputs and the n outputs. So unlike the RAM, in the traditional ROMs, the binary information which we want to store within the ROM must be specified by the designer during the fabrication. And during the fabrication of the ROM itself, the pattern of 1s and zeros is established in the ROM. So this is the internal structure of this 32 cross 8 ROM. So this 32 cross 8 ROM consists of 32 words and the word length of the each word is equal to 8 bits. So here, with the help of the 5 input decoder, it is possible to select any one of the 32 words. So as you can see, here the output of the decoder are labeled from 0 to 31. And the each output of the decoder represents the specific memory address. So here, to read the 8 bits of data from the each word, we have total 8 OR gates. And here, the each OR gate consists of the 32 inputs. So depending on how the ROM is programmed with 1s and zeros, the each output of the decoder is connected to these different OR gates. So in this 32 cross 8 ROM, we have total 256 interconnections. Or in other words, we have total 256 cross points. And here, this each cross point is the programmable. So whenever there is an interconnection between the output of the decoder and the OR gate, then symbolically it is represented by the cross symbol. And if there is a no interconnection between them, then that cross point is left as it is. So wherever there is a cross, then it represents the logic one in the memory. And wherever there is a no interconnection, then it represents the logic zero. So let us see, based on this interconnection, how to read the data from the ROM. So let's say, based on the address input, this fifth output of the decoder gets high. And once it gets high, then wherever there is an interconnection, at those locations, the output of the OR gate will also become high. Because at those locations, physically there is an interconnection between the output of the decoder and the OR gate. While for the rest of the OR gates, the output of the OR gate will remain zero. Because as you know, in the decoder, depending on this address inputs, only one of the decoder output will become high. And if we see the remaining outputs of the decoder, then it will remain low. That means in this case, only this fifth output will become high, while the remaining outputs will remain zero. And wherever there is an interconnection between the output of the decoder and the OR gate, at those locations, the output of the OR gate will become high. So in this case, we can say that the information that is stored at the fifth memory address is equal to 00100011. That means if we want to store this information at this fifth memory address, 
then we need to make the interconnection only at these three different locations and similarly according to the data that we want to store in the each word we can make the interconnections at the different locations so in some types of rom the programming of this interconnection is done during the fabrication itself that means the program that we need to store within the rom that program we need to provide to the manufacturer beforehand so basically this program contains the information in form of ones and zeros for the each word and during the manufacturing according to the data provided by the designer these interconnections are programmed in the rom for example in this 32 cross 8 rom if you want to store this data at the different locations then these are the corresponding interconnections for example at the first address suppose if you want to store 10110010 then in the first row at the locations where we want the logic 1 at such locations we need to make the interconnections so as you can see in the first row at the d7 d5 d4 and the d1 is four interconnections are made and that is why in the first row you can see the four cross symbols at the four locations that means at this four locations where we can see this cross symbol represents the logic 1 and wherever there is a no cross symbol those location represents the logic zero so likewise at the remaining locations by making this interconnections we can store the data that is shown in the truth table so once the data is stored in the rom then with the help of this address lines and the enable input we can read the data from the rom so whenever we want to read the data from the rom then we just need to apply the specific address to the decoder and then we just need to enable this decoder and as soon as we enable the decoder then the data stored at the specific location will be available at the output so this type of rom is known as the mask rom because during the fabrication of this rom itself based on the user requirement the masking has been done for this ones and zeros and accordingly this interconnections are made at the specific locations so in this mask rom the programming of the rom is done during the fabrication itself and once it is fabricated then the data which is stored in the rom cannot be altered during the operation so this mask rom is the one type of rom but apart from that we also have the other types of rom so the second type of rom is the p rom which is known as the programmable rom so we have seen that in case of the mask rom we need to program it during the fabrication itself but this p rom is the user programmable but to program this rom the user has to have the special programming hardware so in this p rom initially all the cross points are interconnected with each other that means before programming if you see the content of this p rom then it consist of the all ones but after programming it is possible to remove some of the interconnections that means here based on the need of the user user can remove some of the interconnections by applying a high voltage at the specific pin in the rom so once it is programmed then wherever there is a interconnection that point represents the logic 1 and wherever there is a no interconnection then that represents the logic 0 and like i said using the special programming hardware it is possible to program these p roms so once the p rom is programmed then the fixed bit patterns of ones and zeros is permanently established in this p rom and once it is established then it is not possible to alter that that means this p rom is the one time programmable but there is a another type of rom which can be programmed multiple times so this third type of rom is known as the e prom where this e prom stands for the erasable and the programmable rom so in this type of rom once it is programmed then using the special uv light it is possible to erase the content of the rom and then it is possible to reprogram it with the help of the special hardware so to erase the content of this rom as you can see on the chip there is a small transparent quartz window so when this window is exposed with the uv light for the certain duration then the content of the rom will get erased and then it is possible to reprogram it with the help of the special hardware that means this e prom is the multiple times programmable but to erase it we need the special kind of uv light but there is a fourth type of rom which can be erased electrically so this rom is known as the e prom so this e prom stands for the electrically erasable programmable rom 
So it is similar to the EEPROM, but in this case, it is possible to erase the content of the ROM electrically rather than the UV light. So the advantage of this ROM is that it can be erased electrically multiple times. And the typical erase and the write operations that can be performed on this memory varies from 10,000 to 1 lakh. That means it is possible to erase the content of this EEPROM this many times. Now if you see the size of this EEPROM, then it varies from the few bytes to hundreds of kilobytes. That means this type of memory is only usable in the applications where we want to store the small amount of data. So if you see this EEPROM, then it allows the byte level write and the erase operations. That means in this EEPROM, at any given time, only one byte of information can be erased or written in the memory. Now similar to the EEPROM, there is another type of non-volatile memory which is often used for the storage. And this memory is known as the flash memory. So similar to the EEPROM, this flash memory can also be electrically erased and the reprogrammed. But unlike the EEPROM, this flash memory supports the block level erasing. That means during the erase operation, instead of erasing a single byte at a time, it erases the data of the entire block. Now if you see the size of this memories, then it varies from the megabytes to gigabytes. And that is why it is used in the storage devices like the USB flash drive and the SSDs. And similar to the EEPROM, the number of write operations that we can perform on this memory is limited. So there are two types of flash memories that is available commercially. That is the NAND flash and the NOR flash. So this NAND flash offers the better write speed compared to the NOR flash. But if you see the read speed, then it is slower than the NOR flash. On the other end, if you see the NOR flash, then it provides the good read speed, but it has a slower write speed compared to the NAND flash. And because of its lower density, it is more costlier than the NAND flash. So if you see this NAND flash, then it is more cost effective for the large storage capacities. And that is why this NAND flash is used in the storage drives. On the other end, this NOR flash is used in the microcontrollers and the BIOS chips to store the program and the configurations. So basically, it is used in the applications where the write operations are not performed frequently and we also need the good reading speed. So these are the different types of ROMs. And depending on the applications, the different types of ROMs are used at the different places. So in general, since the ROM is a non-volatile memory, so it is used for storing the permanent instructions and the data, which is critical for the device operations. Apart from that, in the embedded systems, it is used for storing the program code, the configuration parameters and the calibration settings. Moreover, in the computer systems, this BIOS firmware is also stored in these ROMs. So in early days, it was stored in the ROM, but nowadays, it is stored in the NOR type flash memory. So apart from that, the firmwares for the peripheral devices like the printers and the keyboards is often stored in the ROM. So these are the few applications of the ROM. So apart from storing the data, the ROM can also be used as a programmable logic device. And with the help of it, it is possible to implement the different logic circuits. So in the next video, we will see that how the ROM can be used as a programmable logic device. But I hope in this video, you understood the basic structure of the ROM, the different types of ROMs, as well as the different applications of the ROM. So if you have any question or suggestion, then do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.